This is the Eurovelo 13. It's definitely not like the Eurovelo 6 or the 15 that follow the, the River Rhine and the Danube. It's a tough one. In the previous two films, we rode from our home in London to Switzerland via the Eurovelo 15 and then joined the Eurovelo 6 in Germany and headed east to Romania. In this final film, we leave the Danube and head south into Serbia, joining the Eurovelo 13. The plan was to follow this route through western Bulgaria into north Macedonia for a few days, then back into Bulgaria, where we'd face the biggest mountains of the entire tour. We'd then enjoy a quick afternoon passing through Greece before exploring more of this dramatic region of southern Bulgaria and finally into Turkey. We'd then finish our cycle tour in Istanbul, on the edge of Asia. We'd also transition from a predominantly orthodox Christian or Catholic Eastern Europe to Islam and with that brought a real change in culture and architecture which was exciting and fascinating to ride through. As we ventured deeper into Eastern Europe and with the nights getting colder, we started to use more hotels and cheap apartments as they were similar in price to the campsites in Western Europe. For this section of our journey, we comfortably managed to stick to around 50 euro a day between us. And this was for our accommodation, all the food and drink, and even the odd beer in the evening. Day 71 from Romania. Had a great night's sleep here at the Hotel Corona. Um, really recommend the hotel, it's really clean. Uh, it was great to have showers without spiders in for once. I was very happy about that. We knew from the Eurovelo website that this section is still very much under development and as such it wouldn't be as simple as an EV15 or 6. We had managed to pick up a Eurovelo 13 map which was essential for helping us plan the next few weeks. After the initial really busy main road out of Drobeta Terni Severin we passed through small riverside villages and really began our Eurovelo 13 adventure. This is a roadside well where locals still collect water. It really felt like we'd stepped back in time. We passed through the Romania-Serbia border and refound the Eurovelo 13 sites and headed to the little town of Negatin. In Negatin there's a, a little campsite in the middle of the city apparently so we're going to be staying there and um, sort of planning the rest of our trip. It starts to get really rogue now, we've said goodbye to the Danube and we're carrying on into the, basically into the unknown and up into Hello and up into the mountains. How's that? Hello. Hi. So we just got to Negotin, just over the border in Serbia. And we are staying here. Basically got a little room upstairs. There's even a tennis court out the back of this guy's house. It's got a nice big shed, loads of space for we could do some uh, so we could do some bike maintenance. This brilliant place is called the Guest House for Cyclists. Uh, guest house and camp for adventurers. Right there. And it's a really beautiful Serbian house and quite the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Our Eurovelo 13 map was made by a company called Bikeline. Without it, we'd never have managed to follow the EV13. In Serbia, the Eurovelo signs were fantastic, just as good as Germany. And along with the Bikeline map, we had no trouble at all navigating through this beautiful country. In the map there was no real accommodation section though, so we simply had to look on Google Earth for a campsite and if that failed, we looked on booking.com for a cheap apartment and tried to have the next two or three days planned out. This worked for us all the way down to Istanbul, apart from one night where we had to wild camp in the Bulgarian mountains and we'll get to that day shortly. Hey guys! Ciao! We carried on south to the next major stop, Zajakar. Having already tried and failed to pre-book accommodation here, we gambled on tonight as we saw a few hotels on Google Maps, so figured we'd just turn up and see what happens. We didn't expect any hotels to be full in late September, 
and we look forward to exploring this completely unknown city as well as eating plenty more carb heavy Serbian food. Just arrived in, in a Zad Zadjakar. Zadjakar. You can see that. That is the hotel. The only hotel of the town. And uh, we'll probably end up in there. And there's like a little market going on. It's bustling. Loads going on. We're trying to find somewhere to eat. All these places so far were just coffee. So we're going to follow our nose, see what we find. So we're here at Cafe Triton um, in the town and we've got all of this food for about three quid. Back in Ustipat, integralni puff. Yeah, like that's spicy sausage. Yeah, bread with spicy sausage. Um, bear in mind, 130 is about a pound. It's about one pound 20. You can see what we're looking at. Um, we had some, a couple of local beers as well. These are about 90p. Just to show you this sort of local food, it's just basically pepperoni and cheese. And that one in there, oh my God. Unbelievable. Just a big hunk of meat, chips and bread. Really, really delicious. Super friendly place this. We are gonna stay here tonight, uh, which is called the Hotel Serbia Tis. And it's just got a massive beer bottle on the outside. Uh, hotel costs about 24 quid, just a bargain. Yeah, do it. Scariest lift ever. Polenta, bacon and cheese. <laughs> we are just leaving Zajakar and we're on the way to, I'm cheating here, Nazivac. Um, we're going via. Uh, well, basically via the slower routes because it's away from the main roads, which is going to be beneficial. It's a Sunday though, so there's like no cars around anyway. It's really nice. Brilliantly, the Serbian Eurovelo 13 signs are everywhere and they're really good. It tells you if you want to go on the, the quicker route, um, which is more direct and say about 30k, or you want to go the slow route, which is safer. So yeah, saw heads this morning from quite a few beers last night. Um, so locals bought us a few beers and we had some shots as well of local spirits. Really tasty actually. It's really cold today. <laughs> How's us doing some star jumps to warm up? <laughs> This is much better. We're going down a hill now. Again, no cars whatsoever. Just past one tractor and it's perfectly newly paved surface as well. I spoke too soon. The more scenic Eurovella 13 option took us completely off road and the going was very, very slow for the next few hours. Stretch. <laughs> Say that again. This really long mountain section finishes here at Bukje or Bushje, and then basically from there, it's apparently a really good paved road all the way downhill to our destination today. So there's a Eurovolo 13 sign just over there, and we've just come down through the tiny little village, and the road is now paved. <laughs> Woo! So that was 35k in three hours, 38. That's how slow it was. Oh, been a really, really tough day. Um, beautiful, fascinating, incredible little villages, but oh, tough, really tough on that hill and over the rocky mountains and sand and gravel and all sorts. And we ended up here at Hotel Timok. Um, a bit more than we usually spend on a hotel, but there's literally nothing else around. So yeah, we're going to go and find some food and have a really good relaxing night because it's a very tough day today. Very, very tough, tough, but very positive. Very positive. Yeah. Um, and it was quite, quite exciting, I suppose. 
Day 75 and today we're going from Nazivac to Pirot. It's about 65 kilometers on the main road. So it'll be totally different than the one yesterday, which was all off-road. And uh, we're feeling a little bit, well I'm feeling a little bit sore from that mountain section yesterday. Um, but today should be pretty quick. We've aimed to get to Pirot by about three o'clock. And um, we've got an apartment which costs 20 pounds and um, looks quite comfortable. And we can plan the rest of the day uh, for tomorrow because we're gonna go into Bulgaria tomorrow. We're just going to the local post office first actually just picked up some bananas and some coconut biscuits standard and um, yeah we bought these postcards in Budapest so a good couple of weeks ago now and uh, we're finally going to get around to posting them So we just left uh, Kanazovac and um, we're on the Eurovelo 13 straight away. The signs were really easy to follow, so um, that's a very good sign. The surface has been really flat and smooth and we're, we're flying along really. The road to Pirot turned out to be one of our favorites. We rode alongside the national park with its limestone cliffs and dramatic rivers. And again, it shows that when cycle touring in Europe, no day is the same. And it's always exciting to find out what's around the next corner. It really is just such an amazing way to travel. Forty k's in now, and we're just about to stop for lunch. Been looking for a spot for a while. Um, this spot looks pretty scenic. Just cooking up some lunch at the top of the mountain. Been climbing for well, feels like all of the thirty-nine kilometres we've done so far. It, it's not actually. Uh, it's been a really amazing day. Pretty good road. Very quiet. Stunning scenery. We've really enjoyed it, but we need some need some energy and a bit of a sit down. We just fall in love with dogs too easily. The problem with this one is that she just followed us for miles. We didn't want her to get lost and we tried leaving a few biscuits on the road to stop her so we could get away, but she kept on catching us up. We were getting worried too about the big lorries, but eventually we reached a long downhill and we finally broke away, broken hearted. We reached the suburbs of Pirot, which would be our last stop in Serbia. We had managed to book a cheap apartment online and after a beautiful but hilly day's riding, we looked forward to a nice bit of comfort and home cooking. Just got to our apartment in Pivot and it's got absolutely everything we could possibly need. It's brand new. We've even got our bikes inside. <laughs> she said it was fine. Got a big sofa bed, got a TV. Town looks really nice, there's loads going on. There's even a cycle path. It just seems a lot more modern than anything we've seen since Belgrade, I suppose. So yeah, we're very happy. Good morning, day 76. We're just leaving Pivot and now we're off to Bulgaria. Okay, so Euro Valley 13 update. Uh, we're not going to go on the motorway. So we're going to go from Pirot, which is here. And we're going to get the first train to Dimitrovgrad. See what happens. We decided to take the train 15 kilometers over the border because we heard some horror stories about the new motorway riding conditions. We were getting more and more adventure hardened by the day as we got deeper into Eastern Europe, but we didn't want to take any silly risks. The train would stop in Dimitrovgrad for a few hours, so we had time for a spot at lunch, and then we'd hop back on another train to get into Dragoman in Bulgaria. 
so half past two and we're back here now at Dimitrovgrad train station. We'll probably end up buying the train ticket on the train itself. Oh dear, I just got loads of oil on the knee. Casualty. <laughs> we stopped at the border crossing and an immigration guard took our passports while we stayed on board. 45 minutes later, he returned them with a fresh new stamp and the train continued its short journey over the hilly forest border region down into Dragoman. And here we are in Bulgaria. <laughs> this is Dragoman. <laughs> Day 77, and we're going to a place called Tran today. It's only 40 kilometers away. So if we find out that it's not too mountainous and hilly, we're gonna keep going and wild camp somewhere up in the mountains. Good night's sleep last night. We had to go for this hotel. Uh, it's called the- Dragoman Hotel. Yeah, the Dragoman Hotel, 35 euros. So it's a bit more than our normal daily budget around here. But we had a really good sleep and relaxed and we're ready for Bulgaria, for whatever yeah. it throws at us now. It's pretty fresh this morning. Hmm. Let's do it. From here on we saw very few Eurovelo signs, but there was often only one choice of road to take, and we used the bike line Eurovelo 13 map to know which town came next. Just snap the chain. Just coming out of Geber, just saying how easy and lovely and beautiful it is this morning. Change gear very easily and snap. And we don't have any chain breakers or anything. Or another chain. Or another chain. Matt's managed to snap the chain back together somehow. I'm not sure how, because it looked pretty broken. First worrying break of the trip. It's crazy that we've had a chain break before we've had any punctures. Let's try again. So where were we, Has? Oh, it was a beautiful morning, and we're loving these roads. Great surfing. So we just went through Tran and we had a cup of coffee each, came to one lev, and bearing in mind 2.2 is a pound, that makes it about 20p per coffee, which is amazing. Bought some water and some pistachios and some cheese because we are staying in the wild tonight. It's about three o'clock now and we want to make sure we are basically in somewhere quite safe and secure and hidden by about five o'clock because um, it's October the 3rd, sun goes down at about six o'clock now. so. I want to be ready before then. With no accommodation options for tonight, we kept our eyes peeled for a wild camping spot. It was to be our first ever time wild camping and we were understandably a little nervous and probably overcautious. We found one potential spot up a track and Harriet went to have a look. So just scrap that idea. Um, too many tracks around, probably somebody might come late at night and just peace of mind really. This has, I just bombed down here to find somewhere else. What we can do is go through this bit here and then right down there behind those bushes, looks like no one comes here at all. So I'd be pretty happy with that hidden down there. Let's give it a go. Wild camping, first time. And this is it, this is where we found. So we're basically just off the main road. Well, it's not main road. We haven't seen a car for hours and hours. Um, and we're just sort of behind these bushes. So, oh, it's gonna be nice. We're quite excited. We're quite proud of ourselves. Just gonna do a quick time-lapse now and show you how we put the tent up. Why not?
and this is the finished article lovely beef and pea couscous stew for a big hunk of feta <laughs> Mm. That is absolutely delicious. Yum. <laughs> Just saying it's so important to have a nice hot meal at the end of the day. Especially out here in the mountains, it gets really cold at night. <laughs> oh my god, it's misting up, it's so cold. I'm gonna keep filming anyway. So <laughs> last night, uh, wild camping was a success. We didn't get eaten by the boogeyman, and we didn't get murdered by crazy farmers. Oh my god, it's frost. Has no one done that last person that came here said it was snowing? Yeah, winter is coming. Right, let's go get warm. Ooh. Just got the water on. Happy days. That should be boiled up pretty quick. Then we're gonna make some nice hot coffee, hot porridge, and then get going. Just thawing the rest of the bikes out. One little tip for cold mornings is to use your just finished porridge bowls to warm your feet. And while we're at it, always try and shake out your tent before rolling it up and carrying on with your day. And of course, leave no trace. So these are the local spring water taps that you find absolutely everywhere in Bulgaria. They're just on the side of the road and they usually have a little bench by here as well. And we've seen locals collecting water from them and drinking it, so we figure it's safe to drink. And it's also a good spot after a while camping to do some washing, so <laughs> I've got to do the drying up now. Better go. Hello. <laughs> Yala. In this little shop we have got some really delicious pastries, some borek, all sorts going on. Oh, there's some sort of parrot up there. Hello! Ended up buying these three. I'm not sure what they are. I know that one's got some hard cheese in it. That one, no idea. That one, no idea. And two coffees. And it came to 3.10 lev, which is about £1.50, something like that. So the first one went down really quickly. It was just a cheese pastry and literally wolfed it down. This one is like a some sort of beef patty on top of a bread. It was really nice though. <laughs> Hello boys. Yeah, you do it. He's crazy. It was it. <laughs> After stocking up on some essentials, we were then waved down by a couple sitting outside their house and we stopped to go and say hi. And to my delight, the kind lady Hello. brought us out some chocolates. Mm. <laughs> I started to play with their little cats and then before we knew it we were basically told to sit down as it was lunchtime. Excellent. <laughs> this incredibly generous and kind gesture from these complete strangers was definitely one of the highlights of our trip. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable hospitality. So sweet. <laughs> oh my god, we had so much food. They basically explained, we, we managed to work out that they explained that it's 45 kilometers to the next anywhere to eat. So they fed us lots of food to send us on our way up the hill, so amazing. <laughs> The next few days saw us ride through stunning mountainous countryside. We passed through the lovely town of Kistandil, where Matt got a new chain put on to Komodo by a Bradley Cooper look-alike, before we continued to the major city of Blagovgrad. And here we are, Hotel Katala. Two star, here in Blagdor Girl Grab. So every day, when we get to our choice of accommodation, tonight we're in Blagovgrad, 
whip everything off. The little bag really comes into its own for all the bits and pieces. Everything ready to go. And then we have to find somewhere to put the bikes. These guys are letting us pop them in the cafe overnight. Luckily, I'm not really helping. Uh, oh. I think I better help now. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> In that then. Yeah. This is our room for the night. 16, 17 quid. 17 quid was it? 15, uh, 15 pounds 63. 15 pounds 63. We're right in the middle of the local Black Dog Garev Grad. We love exploring places like this as it really feels like we're the first tourists to ever come here. We're clearly not, but there's something quite special about finding somewhere without the big brand coffee shops and pubs selling English breakfasts and Guinness. We just love wandering around places like this aimlessly, trying some local tasty food and soaking up the atmosphere. Bulgaria is great for that and it's a really wonderful country to visit. And it's even better for cycle tourists, it just has absolutely everything. It's not all about food. You do need food, otherwise you can't cycle anywhere. Oh my god, day 80 and we're going to Macedonia today. Country number 13, if you're included in England, which we are. Uh, we're going to a place called Pacevo today on the way to Borovo. And uh, apparently some big, big, big uphills all day long, which will be great fun. But then the only place to stay anywhere, we don't want to camp again because it's so cold, is a place called, well, in Pacevo, and it's the hotel Govov. Gov God of, and it's 35 euro or something, but it's got a sauna and a steam room. <sighs> it's gonna be so good. Got these two coffees here in Bulgaria. They're really nice, freshly brewed Lavazzi coffees, Lungo. One lev, 40p for two big coffees. That's a good way to start the day. We're just leaving Blagovgrad and as you can see, just on the side of the road, there's so much trash. All this plastic just being left again. It's really sad. Our plastic waste is just as bad. It's just not so obvious. Mm. We've just stopped here at this little bus stop. Bit of shade, really hot now. And we've got some delicious flapjacks. And a girl just came to give us apples. Just being kind. It's so sweet. Mm. Gave us loads of... The entry into Macedonia isn't an easy one. <laughs> We've heard it's easy border crossing, as in the immigration section, um, blah, blah, blah. But to get to the border, you have to climb this huge hill out of Bulgaria. Very, very scenic though, we can't wait to get to the top. I think we might have a sign at the top. Put the drone up, have a look around. It says, one more kilometer to go. Oh, look at all the bees. So good, they make a lot of honey in this region. We bought a little bottle or jar earlier. One kilometer to the Republic of Macedonia, country number 13. Here we are, country number 13, Macedonia. We, um, we waited until we got to the border before we had our lunch break. So it's uh, one o'clock, perfect timing. Oh. And today we've got this, well, like every day really, classic Borek style. We've got 7k downhill now, and uh, and then it's basically uphill all the way to the rest of the, for the rest of the day, up to the hotel. 35. Yeah, so another 35k after the downhill. Bloody hell. That's right. Hopefully not quite as steep as that. Mm. Let's fuel up. <laughs> 
We absolutely love the downhills after such a huge climb to the border and we enjoyed a hot afternoon cycle to our spa hotel in Pachebo where we had a very well earned rest and randomly watched Made in Manhattan in bed. Looks like she's smiling from here but no, we know it's a grimace. <laughs> yes, have a... Yeah, we're nearly there. You having fun? <laughs> Speechless, so much fun. Giving up cycling. <laughs> Considered giving up cycling. Four star hotel, 35 euros. This is by far the most expensive place we've had in months since Switzerland camping, funnily enough. And we're very much looking forward to the spa. We've got a sauna and steam rooms, it's gonna be so nice. Toughest day, probably ever, so. We made it, still smiling. Very smart. Very smart. Oh, good job, we're totally smart and not smelly and grotty. Look, Macedonia flag. Oh. Oh. Yes, hotel, here we go, deserved. So daily routine, pack up the bikes. The next day we took on some of the highest peaks of our trip so far, then downhill into Strumica. I think we've got a bit of a downhill coming, has. Oh, oh yeah. And here we are in Strumica, we're on, on the edge of Strumica now. We've just come down, how many kilometres has? From the top? Uh, nearly 12. Nearly 12 kilometres descent. Fast, hard, fun descent. Meters. Yeah, 900 metres. Well, we came down from 1300 metres top, so this must be uh, around 400 metres mass. Um, but some sad news. Along the way from the summit down to here, we've somehow lost our map, which is a nightmare because we need that map because we don't know these countries very well and the Eurovela 13 is very well very few people have done it and there's very few maps online um, only sort of big 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 ones nothing detailed or anything like that so we just made it to our apartment here in Strimica and we basically got the whole flat so we've got the bedroom the bathroom Premier League football, I'm in heaven, and we've just popped to the local supermarket and we've bought some beers, actual chicken to cook in an actual oven, and basically normal life. With lemon. So this is cabbage with pork or chicken? Pork. Uh, we are watching The Man Who Cycled the World, which came out on BBC 2007. The hills and the heat. This was my original inspiration. Go on, Mark Beaumont. <laughs> and we're leaving Strumica today and going back to Bulgaria. And here we are, back in Bulgaria. Our first stop back in Bulgaria was Camping Kromidovo, not too far from Petrich. Interestingly, owned by a British couple. I cooked some burgers and veg and couscous and we ate at the table. What a treat! The night was pretty noisy with a loud Russian group drinking all night and dogs barking everywhere, but still, we really liked the campsite and it was really, really cheap. 
Over the next few days, we were essentially skirting the southern border of Bulgaria and Greece, heading towards the various ski resorts up in the Rodope Mountains. And if we thought the previous mountain passes were tough, these climbs were on another level. Ta -da! We got burek, some other sort of bread, and some other sort of burek. And that one looks like a pizza. Happy? That's great. You see how far we've come? We came from basically right down in the bottom of the valley. It's not like the Eurovel 06 or the 15, hootling along the rivers. Oh no, <laughs> this one's tough. It's gotta be one of the toughest cycles you can possibly do. 30 kilometers straight up. We started about half nine and we got to the top by half, half three, three and it was just going up the whole time. Imagine the steepest hill you know and then do that for, what was that, five hours? Six hours, six hours up. We're going down to that town there, we think, and the road is just like this, perfect surface, barely any cars. We made it. Next up was the mountain town of Doshpat, home to the highest dam in Bulgaria. It was to be another tough day and we hit the road early, only to have to stop again after a few k to adjust my saddle height, which was continually dropping and a cause of concern. Much better. Huge difference. Okay, so we've just got another breakage on my bike, unfortunately. I was going up the hill and my seat still wasn't high enough. So I was tightening it and then it just snapped off. About the moment now, <laughs> the seat just goes down. So we needed a replacement screw. So what we're gonna do, as has a stand is broken, there's loads of screws on there. So we're gonna try and bodge it with that screw. I think that might be long enough. Long. Got it spring loaded. Oh wow. That's amazing. Right, come on, this is gonna work. So now we've got this screw and I'm hoping that this is long enough. Put it on through there. Okay. It's just about long enough. I don't want to tighten it too much, but that seems to be holding. But there's a wheel, there's a way, and we've managed to fix it. The seat post fix seemed to have worked and we soon reached a little town for lunch. We passed through many little spots like this, with their friendly little town squares and cafes, and food choices perfect for the hungry cyclist. And that looks like it could be like a doner kebab or something. Burger. And here it is. Exactly what we expected. Perfect calorie food when we're feeling knackered from all the mountains around here. It's a really nice little town. Really like it. Feeling tired today, has a... Yeah, legs are sore. I'm absolutely broken. <laughs> We passed through endless pine forests, plenty of free water fountains, and then reached the town of Doshpat, where we had plenty of time to explore the town and have a nice dinner and a big rest tonight, as the highest peaks of the tour were coming up very soon. So we just had another meal where we ordered some garnish potatoes to come on the side with the mixed grill. Has has had her chicken with cabbage already. That came out ages ago and she ate that. Then I got my Greek mixed grill and now I'm still waiting on the potatoes. It's just the way it is over here. Last night, same thing happened again. We had um, everything was ordered, sound, sounded fine. Um, everything was brought out and then 
No potatoes. Still no fried potatoes. Still no potatoes. These Bulgarian restaurants absolutely kill me. Every single restaurant we've been to, just for a bit of cheap eats or even a nicer meal, they've got it completely wrong every time. Um, there was no boiled potatoes, so he said, oh, have he pointed at the fried potatoes. So I was like, yeah, sure, sure, uh, which was a garnish. Um, we both had our main meals. I had a plate just of burgers and sausages, which was the mixed grill, hoping to have potatoes on the side. They're still not come out. He's taken away our table. He's, he's taken away our plates. He's nowhere to be seen. Um, do we want another drink? Mm, might do. Do we want some dessert? Yes. <laughs> Oh, really Jesus anymore. Christ, it's so painful. We just want to have a quick meal so we can get back and carb load and get sleep. I get it only costs about six quid for this entire meal, but just simple, simple service and understanding drives us mad. We're hoping that a cyclist we're faster than a bear can run, but up the hills we're definitely not. I'm also hoping it's so freaking cold that they've just hibernated or something by now. <laughs> Literally cannot feel my fingers at all. And our legs as well are just completely frozen. We just did a huge descent, which is concerning, considering we need to go up to 1,700 meters today. But at least it will keep us warm if we keep going uphill, right? <laughs> I want to go up hills today. I want to go up hills too. <laughs> we're going to decide if we're going to stop somewhere at bang on 12 for lunch, somewhere hot in a restaurant, but we're in the middle of nowhere, so <laughs> see what happens. Look at this place. Absolutely amazing. Stunning gorge. Just saying, I can't even imagine this place in the middle of winter. If it's this cold in early October, Jesus Christ. They must think we're mad. Good morning. <laughs> so we just stopped in this little cafe to warm up and get some hot coffee. Mainly to warm our hands up. <laughs> We're back down to 800 meters and we've got to get up to 1700 to our place. But at least that'll make us warm. Um, 42 k's to go to Somalian. Uh, we think we can make it all the way. That was the furthest place we wanted to try to get to. It's, um, it's definitely doable. This is the highest point we're going to reach on our whole trip from London to Istanbul. 1700 meters something. And that's higher than Ben Nevis, higher than Morzine where we're in skiing. We're above the ski resorts. Unbelievable. After a good night's rest, the morning plan was to find somewhere that could finally fix my seat post. As each time I mended it, it kept on snapping off. It just keeps on moving and dropping and, you know. It's okay for now. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to cycle downhill into the main town and there's lots of little mechanic places we saw in like car shops and stuff so we're going to ask around and see if anyone knows we can't find anything online so um worst case scenario i just have to ride it uh and go up the hill standing up so we'll see comfortable stay there had a really good sleep and it's friday so it's our last day before we're having a day off tomorrow gonna find some chocolate and watch the england game later and we will be okay
but we just need to fix this bloody seat. It's just one thing after another at the moment. Talking of seats, that's cool. Like a ski seat. So we went down the road, um, rolling downhill. It's not too bad actually, just saddle moves like that and obviously I'm riding it like that, like a low rider. Um, we went into two different shops that had bikes out front, but they're just sort of toy bikes and kids bikes and they um, they sell ovens and stuff inside, no idea. Um, but, oh hello, maybe got something here. We found this place, it's like a car place, but he's trying to bodge it. Fixed it, absolute legend. Didn't want any payment either, but we gave him 20 lev, it's about a tenner. Um, basically what he's done is somehow managed to unlodge my broken screw from inside it and then put a, a bolt and a, a new nut on it so and it seems to have held I don't know how long it held for but you know we've done the mountains now anyway so oh such a relief absolute legend just fixing cars I was getting a bit down with the, not constant niggles but the niggles here and there that are just sort of frustrating and having to bodge stuff because I haven't got the tools and I mean who carries around a spare saddle clamp and screws and stuff you can't plan for everything um i mean we plan for nothing but <laughs> still so i'm really happy so we're gonna go to Lidl, buy some chocolate so day 86 and we're finally leaving somalia and it's nearly midday fixed my bike saddle fixed my chocolate craving and we're off So we're about halfway and we're just stopping for some lunch and we've come to this really atmospheric little city. It's called Madan. But that mosque is huge. It makes us so excited to get to Istanbul. We just reached our last summit of, well, maybe the trip. Did not expect to do a mountain pass today, Hazza. No, we did not. Sorry. Hazza said it was going to be flat and downhill all day. Who misplaced the guidebook? Don't know, we both lost a guidebook. Um, this is what we've got to look at now. We're going to go down there. Oh, yes. And we're in Zlatograd. That was an epic 15 kilometers downhill. Yeah, just here on the left has C T A H Y Yabata K B W A. After finishing the mountains, we took a day off to rest and explore Zatagrad. We also realised we just hit 5,000 kilometres. The next day was thankfully a nice, flat, easy ride, following a river all the way to Momchograd. Again, we found an apartment for around £20 online and enjoyed a really comfortable night's rest. Day 89 and today we're going to go 90 odd kilometers basically to the Greek border. We haven't booked anything because um, it's quite a long day and it's still quite hilly so if we don't make it we'll have to wire camp or find something different but I think we'll make it. Here we are in the uh, downtown Krimograd. What a day. How many k's have? 87. 87 kilometers, most of it uphill. The last 20 was mostly down, which was oh, just a dream. What a day, so tired. Last day in Bulgaria, <laughs> one to remember. Day 90. Today we're leaving Bulgaria, our second longest country in terms of duration on this trip. And we're going into Greece for lunch and Turkey for dinner. Gonna finish up in Erdene, our third day on the trip where we visited three countries in one day. But first, we're repairing the first flat tire that we've had all trip. I can't believe we made it 90 days. We've got four spare tubes, um, and Matt's gonna just change his back tire. So hopefully, we'll go a bit faster today. Not bad getting 90 days, was it? Without Not getting bad. flat tires. It's pretty good going. Should be a lot easier to ride today. 
um, and we're back on the flat and the sun is shining. We're going to Greece and we're going to Turkey and we're going to have an epic meal in Erdene this afternoon, so really excited. <laughs> no, finish oh, Istanbul. England. England to here. And then stop. <laughs> <laughs> what did you end up with, Ash? Um, one, two, three, four. Eight apples. <laughs> <laughs> Why have we got eight apples? Very healthy because he wouldn't let me just give him the change. Oh, hero. Day. So he took our lev. He was going to give me euros and then he was going to give me lev. And then I was like, no, keep it. And then he filled the bag with apples. Brilliant. <laughs> no. <laughs> we then rode through wonderfully fluffy cotton fields to a little town where we stopped for a pint. The Turkish border was moments away. We couldn't believe we were about to enter our final country and we were excited to take our last border crossing photo. But there was still time for Matt to have a quick kick about with a local Greek kid in the street. Just coming to the end of our time in Greece now the full two hours of it and we're getting up to the turkey border so excited this is absolutely momentous can't believe we just cycled to turkey no man's land between greece and turkey we did it we just reached turkey, turkey! <laughs> can't believe we've just cycled from london to turkey amazing the plan was to follow the Eurovilla 13 for a few more days east before it goes north and we carry on to the black sea before one final last day's ride into Istanbul. We were so excited to be in Turkey, if not for the food alone, and we settled into a cheap hotel and went out to explore this historic city. And Hazza just picked up this little scarf. Um, obviously you've got to cover your head when you go into the mosque. It costs seven lira, which is just less than a pound at the moment. And it's really nice, you know, we're at home. With Adirne being well off the tourist trail, unlike Istanbul, it felt like we were the only foreigners around, and we practically had the impressive Selimi Mosque all to ourselves. This mosque is almost 450 years old and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A trip to Turkey isn't complete without visiting one of the famous Turkish baths, so we decided to give our bodies a very well-earned treat. Oh my god, that was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. That felt incredible. It was 100 lira in the end, which is about 12 quid. And basically have a, a full-on scrub down um, after a bit of a sauna kind of experience. And then you have a good wash, you get all the dead skin off. Then you give a massive kind of weird bubble bath hand thing. And, um, and then you wash it all off again and have a big, big massage and he literally clicked everything in my body that I, I didn't know could click. And then afterwards you just sit there and chill with them and have a chat about football as you do and uh, have a cup of tea. Really recommend it, that was absolutely phenomenal. And the hammam we just went to was built apparently 700 years ago and it's still in use exactly as it was. Definite must do when you come to Turkey. So we're just leaving the Hotel Edrin and we're going to Kirkareli today. We've got a hotel book tonight. And then after that, it's one more night before the Black Sea. So we just took the D535 out of Erdene and we turned right after the exit for the D080, which is the main motorway by the looks of it. And this way should be a lot quieter. That main road as well out of Erdene was fine. Um, they're the big hard shoulder, so no problems at all. Quite quick, good surface. Got all of our lights on. Should be fine. It was 67 kilometers to Kirkrelly, and as you can see, the scenery became quite monotonous and undulating, so we just hammered out the miles, listening out for passing vehicles, ready to get tighter to the edge of the road. Kirkrelly would also be the end of our Eurovelo adventure. After starting in the Netherlands, the Eurovela network has been incredible. 
Although, as of 2018, there were little or no signs after Serbia, we simply cycled from town to town as per the Eurobella 13 route. After Kirkulareli, we were out on our own for the last few days to Istanbul via a ceremonial detour to the Black Sea. Back to today, and it was the return of the seat post saga. So Matt's seat post clamp has sheared off another bolt. Just haven't got the right screw, so it's not basically pulling that together to clamp hard enough to keep the saddle up. Just gonna have to ride without a saddle for the long way. Okay, so ridiculously, I've managed to bodge it for a little bit by wedging my sandals underneath there on top of the pannier rack and putting a brick into my saddlebag. I'll show you what I mean. So in that saddlebag, there's a brick and it means that the saddle hopefully won't go down too much. And that's given me probably an extra four inches or so. So I can actually get a little bit of power. We just kind of want to get there now. There's so many fun, exciting things to look forward to in Istanbul. And we've got three days of this undulating hill, flat then not flat. Nothing to see apart from agriculture. It's a bit, bit of a, a letdown of a finish, I guess. But when we get to the Black Sea, we'll be so proud and so happy. Still haven't found anywhere to stay yet, um, being off season a bit as well. But basically after that, it's only 60k to Istanbul. It's gonna be amazing. We staggered into Kirkareli, bikes and bodies battered and bruised, and went to find tonight's apartment. Finally in Kirkareli. We're absolutely shattered. Sitting so low on my bike, my knees and my thighs are burning. But we're nearly there, and hopefully we'll find our bike shop. Looks like quite a big place. And this is where we're staying tonight. Just so tired. Day 93 and today we're going to Sarai, but first we've got to go to the bike shop to fix my saddle again. So we've just found the shop that sells literally everything. Bikes, mopeds, stoves, whatever you want. So these guys here at the uh, Texim bicycle shop slash sell ovens, sell barbecues, sell everything. They've managed to fix my clamp by finding a new part to clip it on and using my old clamp. So they managed to fix it somehow. And we're just pumping up the tires a little bit before we go. Very happy. So we've only got three more days cycling to Istanbul and um, everyone's staring now. So I'm gonna close. That's absolutely miles better. I can actually put some power down on the pedals now and they pumped our tires up properly because my little pump was useless. And now we're on the way to Sarai and it's basically main roads all the way now, DO20. You okay? Where is it? Friday night in Sarai, happening place. Pretty cool place actually, there's loads going on. Good morning. Today is day 94 and we're cycling to the Black Sea today. Sarai, that's the last city we're gonna see before we get to Istanbul. Wow, what a section. That was horrible. <laughs> How horrible? 
really, really 20 kilometers of motorway. Horrible. We did it though. Wasn't, I don't think it was that too bad because um, wasn't that bad because we had the big hard shoulder most of the way. It just but, felt like we shouldn't have been there. Yeah, we shouldn't have been there probably. And then we just saw a sign for Karabarin, um, has a punch the air with delight. And we just turned off. Um, I think more to get off the motorway oh, than to get to the joy. beach. 14 kilometers to go. 14. There's our sign for Karabarin. We did it! <laughs> that is the Black Sea. We cycled to the Black Sea from London. That is mega. <laughs> we're so chuffed. We didn't know where we were gonna see it. We just went around the corner in this very grim little place. And right there. it's right there in front of us. <laughs> so surreal. <laughs> Let's go and check it out, huh? We're gonna find a home for three days. Yeah. Here we are, Carabaroon Harbour. It's not quite St Ives, but it's got a certain charm to it. We're gonna head down that way. Oh God, look, there's a, the first beach we see has got barbed wire around it, uh, but the hotel's down there somewhere. So this is the first view we get of the Black Sea. A little bit, a tad underwhelming, but I'm sure it's gonna improve. This is just the main town centre. Initial thoughts as of reaching the Black Sea. There you go. This is where we we looked on the map that we're going to try and stay. It's just half dead dogs, sleeping dogs, and just so much litter. I've never seen so much litter anywhere in my life. <laughs> I say it's got a lot of potential. The sand colour's nice. The water looks nice. This is really sad. So we're going to go and check into this hotel for one night and um, decide what we're gonna do after that. I cannot understand how it's fully booked. It's the middle of October, there's literally no one around. Nothing is open. And it's one of the most disgusting places I've ever been to. We're trying to stay positive and trying to make the most of this place, but, and also trying to be happy that we got to the Black Sea. As real novices, cycling the width of Europe from the North Sea to the Black Sea felt like a huge achievement. Reaching the Black Sea was supposed to be quite a momentous occasion and we dreamt of celebrating with a bottle of bubbly in a nice beach bar. So to arrive to this was a real disappointment. But that's the beauty of cycle touring. You win some and you lose some. Many of our favorite places were spots we hadn't read or heard about and had accidentally stumbled upon. I think if you put too much pressure on a location, you almost don't live in the moment. And for the last week, we had pretty much wished away our ride through Turkey, as we just wanted to get to the Black Sea. We had only one day's riding left of the entire London to Istanbul tour, and we wanted to embrace and enjoy every second of it. The weather was supposed to perk up again in a day's time, and without really anywhere better to go, we decided to have a day off here to completely relax and recover. The last few days riding in Turkey had definitely taken its toll and navigating through such a huge city like Istanbul would certainly require 100% concentration. It wasn't going to be an easy cruise to the finish line that's for sure. It's been the most incredible trip and I highly recommend it to anyone. Even if you do a short tour or a long tour or any, anything at all, even a day trip on a bike. Yeah. It's such a good way to travel around. Um, we've seen some amazing things haven't we? Met some awesome people. So we set off for the final time feeling rested and excited, but also feelings of sadness that the trip would soon come to an end. Okay, so we just had a quick chat and uh, there's just nothing we can do. Since the D20's been built and the airport's been built, all the roads we had researched and looked at going on don't exist anymore, or you can't get on them. So we're gonna have to go back on the, the big D020, which is this. Not fun, not fun at all. There really was no other way, but we felt safe enough on the hard shoulder and knew once we reached the city suburbs we'd be back on smaller roads, albeit with probably much less space for our cyclists.
We're just battling our way through Istanbul now. It's absolutely mental, carnage everywhere. And to be honest, it's really, really enjoyable, really exciting. How's us got this? Should be there in an hour or so. Big city. We're in Istanbul. <laughs> Traffic is absolutely insane, but it's fine. Slow's good. Taking it all in. Can't believe we're here. We did it! We just cycled from London to Istanbul. It feels amazing. We're actually here. Over here we've got the spice market. And that's Galata Bridge over there with Galata Tower up on the top of the hill. We did it, Has. <laughs> Can't believe it. A cycle tour really is like no other holiday. It's doable by anyone who can ride a bike, be it a manual, electric, trike or tandem, unicycle or recumbent. It's the type of trip where no day is the same and the freedom you'll feel is unparalleled. It can be for a simple overnight ride to your nearest campsite or hotel, or you can leave everything behind and ride around the globe. Or as we did in a couple and share the experiences, the highs and the lows. It's something that we'll always have and we'll try not to always bring it up in every conversation. quite surreal to be here but we just did it. All that planning and all the excitement and looking forward to it, the anticipation, we're finally here in Istanbul on the edge of Asia. This is it, has the last 10 meters of our trip. <laughs> I don't want it to stop. Yeah. Should we just carry on? World House Hostel, Istanbul. London to Istanbul. Done. We knew we had just done something not many couples get a chance to do, and it certainly brought us closer together. So what's next for us? The following summer I proposed to Harriet just before her 30th birthday, and thankfully she said yes. We managed to get married mid-pandemic, and almost three years since we left for our cycle tour, life just got even more exciting with the birth of our beautiful baby, Felicity. We can't wait to emulate many of the cycle touring families we saw on the Eurovelos and to continue to explore by bike. It's a huge cycling network that is continually improving and we can't wait to get back out there. So watch this space for future videos with our little family. As we sat and enjoyed a well-earned beer, we remembered some of the characters we'd met along the way and the massive variety of tasty food and the delicious wine from lesser known regions such as Austria and Hungary. The Balkans were arguably the most hospitable and was certainly the best valley region to ride through, probably the most dramatic in terms of scenery and definitely the most challenging. If we look back on the whole trip in three sections, the EV15, 6 and the 13, possibly our favourite part was this last bit along the Iron Curtain Trail towards Turkey. It really felt like an adventure. However, that's not to downplay the easy riding along the Rhine, the variety of the Danube, and how much we just loved every single day of the trip. We really hope you've enjoyed these three films and thank you so much for watching. I love answering all the comments, so please do feel free to ask any questions. If you're looking to do this trip or even just part of it, Harriet's blog is amazing and has the entire route with each night's accommodation stay costs and daily distances. Thanks again for watching and please subscribe for future videos.